In New Orleans, seafood is as much a part of life as changing tides. I was raised between shrimp etouffee and fried cabbage, learned to walk on crab legs, and was baptized in a pot of crawfish before I even knew what one was. Still, I was always disgusted by the oysters. But see, my dad loved it. He said that the zinc in the meat was good for your hair, and if I had seen the hairlines on the men on my mama's side of the family, I better start eating them. <laughs> I would later learn that an oyster's pearls were formed from foreign parasites that had breached the boundaries of its shell. To protect itself from the danger, the oyster cocoons the substance in coats of calcium until the very thing that was trying to destroy it becomes the thing that makes it most beautiful. Mother Nature has a funny way of teaching us. See, last summer while visiting home, I went to check on my dad to see if he knew the score of the game, but when I opened the door to his bedroom, I saw him laying on the ground like a broken promise, genuflecting in front of a prayer. My father held his stomach as if he had been stabbed by the very person entrusted to protect him, the traitor. It's never been so silent. There is no treason like that of your own body turning against itself. A Benedict Arnold with a bayonet in your bloodstream. A Judas kissing your kidneys goodbye for 30 pieces of silver. It's a chronic kidney disease. It's deep sea dying with no oxygen. Drowning underwater waiting for a transplant to bring you back to the surface. But my father is an oyster with a shell hardened by growing up in a place where expectations never rose above low tide. Has a coral reef of a mother with the echo of an unborn ocean of her breath taught him that when the waves of this world try to wear you down, it's okay. We are all just a little bit weathered, and she has taught me that if an oyster can turn a parasite into a pearl, then it is no surprise that my father can turn a kidney into calligraphy. See, when I was 14 and he was first diagnosed, he wrote me a 15 page letter saying that if anything happened, I had to be ready to become the man of the house he wrote Clint. Though it hasn't always looked like it, I've always put God first. I know you complain because Clinton Ward Smith III makes it sound like you're the heir to a British monarchy, but never doubt you are a king. Understand that I gave you your grandfather's name because the most sacred things I have ever known come in Trinity's Clint. Love your mother like a stained glass window in a war zone. She be both shield and shard, both weapon and protection. Treat every woman like you would want a man to treat your sister. This ocean already has enough sharks, Clint. Don't be another shark. My father is an oyster. Clasp down tightly on the things he loves the most, his family and his God. He has a calcium encrusted heart cradled tightly in his chest. There are scars worn from waves that have tried to erode him of this world. My father is an oyster. And I pray that when he is pulled from this ocean, that those who live above the surface will see the brilliance of his pearls. Yeah.